Hey y'all, it's Andrea here at VW Family Farm. You may be like, why do you have all that stuff? Well, I'm gonna tell you. So I know sometimes it probably looks like to you guys that we're just having stuff go wrong, like literally all the time. And while it does feel that way sometimes, that's not the case. It's just a lot of times I show you when things go wrong because we can learn from them and so can you. So we had a really near tragedy yesterday. And by tragedy, I mean tragedy. Um, and we're not completely out of the woods yet. Hence all the things in my hands that I've gathered up. I'm going over to the corral. We almost lost my two milk cows yesterday, Butter and Miracle. If you've been around here a while, you probably feel like you know those two cows. Um, we had a near disaster that we caught really just in time or they would not be alive. We did not have a minute to spare when I figured out the problem. So let's go over to the corral. I'm gonna tell you all about what happened and try to get these girls fixed up. I don't know how long my camera battery is gonna last. I just realized it is almost dead. What's new? So I'm probably gonna take you over there and show you them because I have to go do this. Um, I can't wait and do this later. So I have to go do what I'm gonna do, show you that, and then I'll explain it all to you. Let me just tell you real quick, um, based on what happened, um, the girls are recovering now. They, they look pretty good. I'm gonna show you them in just a second, but they can be a little bit aggressive based on what happened. I mean, based on what happened yesterday, some otherwise tame cows have chased people up trees before from things I've read. Um, and we did see some aggressive behavior yesterday. So I'm just giving y'all fair warning. They're probably not gonna be acting just like themselves. And I'll explain all that in a little while. Butter go. gonna have to have a gun thingy tool to deliver this um, I'm giving the entire tube and um, gonna just have to make her swallow it and I'm gonna explain this in a little bit my camera is about to die hey y'all it is the next day I'm walking out to get started on chores the camera battery died. So here we are the next day. But I want to tell you guys the story of what happened and where we are now and how the cows are doing. So we separate our calves from our milk cows um, and then we come out the next morning after they've been separated for the night. We feed the calves, they're well taken care of. We come out the next morning and milk the cows. And so I've been doing this same thing for a long time works perfectly and for the past couple weeks i've also been adding in back that way is our milk cow pen and then this is our pig pen this pig pen is growing up right now um, with good grass it's early spring there's a big flush of of green grass especially cool season grasses that there's a lot of fescue and things out there and their milk cow pen is pretty eaten down because they've been on it all winter for one and for another we've got the bulls in there with them right now it's just there's just not much out there so we're still putting out hay out there so what i've been doing is putting the calves up for the night and then letting the milk cows over to the pig pen to give them some green to eat and all the things it's been working beautifully until it wasn't so i came out a couple days ago I've lost track of what day I believe it was Tuesday and looked out here and right out in here laid my milk cows well milk cows especially jerseys are creatures of habit really really creatures of habit to the fact that if you like swat one or yell at them or whatever they'll honestly kind of remember it they they have a personality and they kind of have an attitude 
And so their habit is either they're standing at this gate where I let them back into their pen, which enables them to come up to the milk barn, which you see right behind me, or if they're in this milk cow pasture, they're standing at the gate ready to go into the barn to be milked. One of the two, every day without fail. So the fact that they were just laid out in the grass and weren't even attempting to get up, that was the first weird thing. That's when I was like, what is going on here? Are they, do they have a belly ache from all the grass? I, I don't know. Then Miracle got up and I looked at her and it didn't appear she had a whole lot of milk. Second weird thing, because she should have had a lot of milk because she'd been separated from her calf all night. Butter didn't even attempt to get up. Third weird thing. Then Miracle started to walk and she started to stumble. And I let her through this gate into her milk cow pen so I could get her up to milk and she actually fell down. What are we at? Fourth weird thing now, we're at weird thing number four. By then I knew something was very, very, very wrong. And I honestly already pretty much knew what it was. So I went in there, I went and got like a little thing that has a shaker on the end of it that basically just makes the cows like they don't like the sound of it and so they'll get up because I knew butter was not gonna get up easily. Went in there and she wouldn't get up. I was staying calm but inside I was inwardly panicking because I knew something was bad wrong. These are my milk cows, they're very precious to me. They're the only two I have left. So all my eggs were in one basket. If something happens to them, I'm sunk on milking cows. Went in there and was able to get her to attempt to get up. She walked a couple steps and she stumbled and she fell sideways and her legs went up in the air, all four legs up in there. It was not a good sight. Um, and you can get very hurt trying to roll a cow back over. You have to be very careful. So I started attempting to roll her back over. I wound up getting her where she was laid flat out on her side. That's what a lot of cows look like when you find them dead. Again, not a good sight. She could not get herself rolled all the way over. And I knew at that point I needed help. So I called Ben and I said, can you please, please, please take a lunch break and come over? Thankfully, the Lord worked it out. He was up in this area. He came, by that point, she had rolled herself back up. She was in a sitting position. He got here and we decided, I already knew, but we, we made the call that we gotta call the vet. Like, we're in a dire emergency and time is of the essence. We knew at that point they had what is called grass tetany. We did not have a vet's diagnosis at that point, but we pretty much knew the signs and we had let them in to this pig pen. We did realize that I'm very meticulous that I feed the pigs and then I let the cows in hours later. I did realize there had been a crossover that they possibly could have eaten a little pig feed, not much, but I thought maybe that had something in it that bloated them. We wound up tubing butter while she was laying down out here and releasing air, but I've tubed one that's bloated before and you will release a lot of air. She rarely released anything, so it seemed like it was just in the normal course of digestion what we released out of her stomach. So, realized that that was probably not the case. Process of elimination looked like it was grass tetany. So grass tetany is where their magnesium levels drop super low. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you, you can see butter behind me. She is not 100% by any means, but she is much better. If she walks here in a minute, you're gonna see she's not walking super steady. She's got a ways to go. Um, butter is not like a young heifer anymore. So she's gonna have a little bit more of a tough time recovering from this. Um, and this does seem to affect older cows. Their magnesium levels in the spring tend to drop super low, especially if you put them on a, a lush green field like we did of, of cool season grasses. Um, it does not happen often. In fact, it's never happened to us before, but I know people that it has happened to. And so that's why I kind of knew what to look for. It's deadly very, very, very quickly. And I would say, this is just my personal opinion, kind of likely. Um, if you don't catch it in time, a lot of times what you'll do is you'll come out in the morning and they'll be dead and then you will have discovered that that's what happened. It's just, it's a very rapid thing. We apparently caught it at the very, very beginning stages. 
So these cool season grasses out in this pasture are very low in magnesium. Coupled with the fact that they have nursing calves on them that is also depleting them of magnesium. Um, cows can store magnesium like in their muscles and bones, but they can't readily access it. So as they're eating these things and, and they also have, for lack of a better word, diarrhea right now, which just comes with them eating on the fresh spring young grasses. And so they're losing nutrients that way too. And their magnesium levels just plummeted. So the vet came out and um, he wound up taking blood and then he gave them um, an IV with magnesium in it, coupled with other things, I believe calcium, which I know how to do an IV. I considered doing that myself, but for one, I didn't have time that day. For two, time was of the essence and we didn't have time to wait around and me to get all the supplies gathered up and, and figure it out. You have to do it slowly because calcium can mess with their heart. You can wind up killing them from that. So it's, it's not something you just shove a needle in and start dripping it in. It's not like that. So um, they gave them the IV. They checked their blood before they gave the IV so we would know their magnesium levels. And they took a fecal sample for their parasite load. The results came back. You can see Miracle here. She lived through it, thankfully. She is better than butter, but she's still a little wobbly herself. Um, and so I left the calves. Let's, let's backtrack. Let me insert a couple facts because this all happened so quickly. I left their calves off of them the whole rest of that day, which I should have milked them that morning. I left the calves in the corral to keep them off them because they can hardly stand, much less let a calf nurse. Left their calves off of them and then um, put them up in the corral, which is way over there, so that the vets could work on them. And then we left them in the corral so we could be ready based on what the vets told us to do. So they should have been just bursting with milk but that's another symptom of this their milk production will just go to the toilet like it will just plummet and it did so even yesterday morning when i came out and it's 24 hours late on milking i should have milked them 24 hours before that i still didn't get hardly anything that's just their body's response it's just part of it and that was that's part of a clue of what they have so I wound up letting the calves out. I'm not milking them the rest of the week, at least. Trying to let them get their strength back and um, let their calves just nurse to keep them in milk because they'll keep them, you know, milked out. The vet called and said that their magnesium levels were low and their parasite load was very high, which that is not surprising when you have animals on a pasture you're not rotating. And that is... That's one of the bad things about like having them up here at the house to milk. It's very hard to rotate them up here. So um, after them giving them the IV, we also gave them a paste. I showed you that at the beginning of the video. I gave them that whole tube of, I believe it was CMPK. Um, so I gave them all of those minerals and vitamins and then um, also gave them part of that other tube was wormer gave them wormer, and then I gave them a shot, which is an injectable wormer. Um, and then I had to text and let all my milk customers know what had happened and what they had been given. Because if people are getting raw milk, they generally care about what the cow is getting. And so I had to go ahead and do that, tell them now that we don't have milk for the whole rest of the week, and mentally deal with the fact that I could lose both my milk cows. And I, I already told Ben, I said, if we lose them, I'm done. I'm done for a while. It doesn't mean I'll never milk cows again, but I am done for the foreseeable future. I don't want to run out and just get another milk cow. I, I, need, I need a mental break from this as well as a physical break from doing this. So I was already preparing myself to lose them, even though it was, oh, it was going to be awful, awful. Um, miracle is named Miracle for a reason. And Butter was literally the first milk cow I ever trained. Her, she came with her mom, who was already a milk cow from a dairy. And we trained Butter from a wild buck and bronco calf to be a milk cow. They're just special to me. And so, but I was already preparing myself. But thankfully, you can see that 
it's turned out okay so far. I really think we're out of the woods. They're just weak um, and they're just, they're just tired. So what have we done now? I'm trying to tell y'all the condensed version of this story and not drag this out all day, but we put them back over here in the milk pen. They've got a bale of hay over there. I don't know if you can see that. They need plenty of roughage. They need to get, you know, get going because by the time that all this took place, they were also dehydrated because they were laid out there wobbly, not able to get to the water. And um, another symptom is muscle twitching and they were, their muscles were twitching so bad. Butter got over here in this uh, milk cow pen, got herself off in the pond when we were trying to get her over to the crowd for the vet to see her. Ben wound up having to put on waders and get out there in the pond and he liked to have never got her to get up out of the pond. It was just a rodeo and, and a disaster, but it all worked out. So thankful for that. But we've got them, like I said, over back in the milk pen. We also have given them um, high magnesium minerals. That's the number one thing you need to do. And we do that, but they just didn't have any when this incident occurred. But we try to keep high mag minerals, is what they call them, out for all of our cows and calves, everything. Because they need a high magnesium concentration going in because if they don't, this is what will happen because all these early season grasses are low in magnesium, coupled with the fact that they have the runs, for lack of a better word, and it's just kind of a perfect storm. And so that's why there is high magnesium minerals because this is a problem. Um, I would encourage you to do that. You can get those at, you know, chain stores like Tractor Supplier Atwoods or any of those. I'm not affiliated with any of those. You can get those at your local farm feed and seed stores as well. Um, I would just encourage you to do that. You don't have to do that year round, but you need to be doing that right now because we literally avoided by the skin of our teeth a major catastrophe. And I'm just thankful that it turned out okay, but it could, it could very easily not have. So... That's the story. Sorry, this is a lot of talking. I had no camera to film or time when the action was going on. I was just worried about my milk cows, but I wanted to let you guys know about that because it's important info for any of your cows. Um, just keep it in mind, watch them, but most importantly, supplement them with magnesium this time of year. I'll see you guys later and I'm hoping this market's going to be done soon. Be showing you that soon. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys on the next one. God bless.